In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ our Lord knows his people well. He even has several nicknames for his followers. He calls his disciples little faith ones, or you of little faith. This sounds a lot like something that we say down south. We say, oh, bless your heart. Now this sounds nice enough, but in fact, it's, it's an insult. That means something like, you're not very smart, are you? Oh, you of little faith. Here in John 10, Jesus gives us another nickname. He says we're his sheep. Being a sheep might not sound so bad, but, it's, but this too is not a flattering title. It means about the same thing as bless your heart. There's a lot that we could say about just how dumb sheep are, but I grew up in the suburbs, not on a farm, and so I'll just stick to the details that Jesus gives us here and let Jason Rumsa fill in the rest later. Jesus says that there are three things you need to know about sheep. First, they are tasty. You know that you found a good Mediterranean restaurant when you go in and you see lamb roasting on a spit right there. There are plenty of beasts of the field that would love to sink their teeth into them. Meanwhile, sheep don't have a lot of defense mechanisms. They don't have claws or sharp, or sharp teeth. They can't, can't run very quickly. They must be guarded by a faithful shepherd or else they'll wind up on some wolf's plate. Second, sheep's primary sin, as far as Jesus is concerned, is that they wander. It's a problem, for example, not only when the wolf snatches the sheep, but also when he scatters them, because they're not going to find their way back. They'll wander off and die one way or another. I get frustrated with our cat sometimes because he's not our dog. Unlike Bonnie, our dog, Clyde, our cat does not come when I call him, nor do anything that I tell him to do, except get off the table when I threaten him. He's not eager to please me. Well, sheep are far worse. They're just looking for the next blade of grass wherever it happens to be. And when sheep wander, they get into trouble because, again, they're tasty and they're not smart. The third and most important thing that Jesus wants you to know about sheep is that some of them are his. When, the, when Jesus says he's the good shepherd, he's also saying that we are his sheep. We are not sheep primarily because we are dumb or foolish or helpless, though we may be those things too. We are sheep because Jesus claims us as his sheep. And this is a great comfort. It's worth being called a sheep if Jesus is our shepherd. But what does Jesus say about his sheep? My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. And no one will snatch them out of my hand. Sheep are prone to wander. But, but Christ, the good shepherd, is able to call them, and they come back, unlike when I call my cat to come to me. And moreover, wolves are not a risk for Jesus' sheep, because none can snatch them out of Jesus' hands. Neither is death really a risk for Jesus' sheep, because he gives us eternal life. Christ, our shepherd, guards and protects us from every enemy. Jesus also says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Jesus does whatever it takes to protect his sheep, even if it means laying down his life to save ours. We are that valuable to him, and he takes his job as our shepherd seriously. 
Finally, Jesus says, and I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. The other sheep of whom Jesus speaks are the Gentiles, those who didn't grow up Jesus, those who didn't grow up Jewish, us. But when Jesus spoke these words, we weren't born yet. But still, Jesus talks in the present tense, I have other sheep. Not in the future tense, I will have other sheep. Jesus speaks as if he owns us already, as if he has full claim over us and nothing can prevent him, or nothing can prevent us from belonging to him. And this is exactly right. Nothing can stop Jesus, neither wolves nor the prowling lion nor death can tear us apart from Christ. It's good to be Jesus' sheep. It's good to, to know that we're his sheep as well. In this relationship of shepherd to sheep, what does the sheep contribute? Well, nothing. There's no expectation that we will be able to take care of ourselves provide for ourselves, protect ourselves, or anything. Our only defense mechanism in this world is our shepherd. And it's not like we start out as sheep, and then as we grow into mature Christians, we become something else, an eagle or something. No, no, no. Throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Lord only desires that he would be our shepherd and we would be his sheep. Jesus' greatest desire is to be our shepherd, our defense mechanism, to rescue us from sin, to protect us from the demons, to free us from death by laying down his own life. It's all he wants for us. And yet our greatest temptation, our greatest weakness, is that we Christians imagine that we are somehow better than foolish, wandering sheep. We imagine that, that, we, that we can be safe and fine on our own, apart from, our, from the watchful eyes of our shepherd. And so we wander off and do our own thing, thinking that we are impervious to the wolf's teeth. The wolf watches, licking his lips. But Jesus doesn't, but Jesus doesn't let us wander too far. He doesn't wait for us to find our way back home. He doesn't hold up some food and say, you can have it or not, take it or leave it. No, the Lord himself seeks for his sheep. He searches for them. He rescues us from all the places where we have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. He brings his lost sheep home, and the angels rejoice. He makes us lie down and rest. Dear Prince in Christ, bless your hearts. You are just sheep, so am I. But we are Jesus' sheep. We are safe and secure under our shepherd's watch, watchful eye. Don't go thinking too highly of yourself. Don't think a little, uh, uh, don't go and think a little bit of this or that might be dangerous for a new Christian, but, but I'm okay. I can take it. I would never wander off too far. No, watch out. The, the devil is prowling around. The wolf is licking his lips. But still, Christ our good shepherd has his watchful eye on us. He will rescue us from our foolishness and from the wolf's teeth. And he will bring us back to the safety of his flock. In Jesus' name, amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We stand to sing the offertory. <laughs>